Hello everybody, welcome back to the Blessed Performance YouTube channel. Today we're going to install a sump on this here pick -em up truck. We have our Beans Diesel, and this is my personal favorite one. If you watched on King Twins, we did an install of a fast fuel system with a sump. This is the 280003, and I'll tell you guys why. Because of these fittings right here. So, with this sump, it comes with a couple extra fittings in it that help in the install. This one right here is to plug your old feed line. This is to plug the old um, return line back to the tank. And then you also have a two-in-one sump design that allows you to run a return and a suction from the sump. It's pretty fancy looking, if you can see. It's a one-bolt concept. Now, we did jump the gun because we are running short on time. Unfortunately, I'm not going to show you guys how to drill and get diesel all over your face like I did. It's a lot easier on a four post. I will say that. It's probably going to be a short video, honestly. There's not much to this. Generally, what we'll do is obviously we'll use the, it comes with the hole saw, the two and seven eighths hole saw that is required to mate it up to that round circle right there or to this one right here as well. If you look, this hole saw fits right around the inner machined lip of, of the, the, the outer part of the sump so it'll fit nice and snug right up in here. Now, this is on a 6.0 power stroke. Every truck has a little bit of different design to it. So I'm gonna show you guys, this is where we put them. I don't put it in the very back because it gets too close to this, to the drive shaft, I think. It doesn't give a good way to protect it. Yes, there might be half a gallon if I was a, or I guess if I was like upside down, I don't know if I'd get any fuel. But if, <laughs> if I'm on a 6% grade, if I'm down to like a gallon, there's a pretty good chance I'm not going to get that back there. So I wouldn't say run it down to less than a gallon. I don't say that for any diesel. It does not matter the situation. If you look, it's almost dead square in the center of the tank. If you look, the best way to reference it is right here. This is where your factory pickup tube is at. And I don't know if you can see that in there. I'm hoping you can. Let me turn my screen on. You can kind of see the reflection in there, okay? So I don't put it right here because that'll hurt your factory pickup tube. What I do do is put it right in front of it at the next flat spot. So there's a ridge right here, and then you got this curve right here, put it right in the middle of that. And it seals perfectly, never has a problem. We got 20,000 miles on King Twins like that. Obviously, this truck's already had a fast install. Um, we will end up plugging some lines up here, rerouting some stuff around, um, making sure that we don't have anything leaking. Once you start drilling, you'll get the center hole lined up and it's gonna start leaking from you, or leaking from the situation. All right, leaking from the hole. Ah, okay. Then we like to just let it drain until it's done. This one had 30 gallons of diesel in it. We, this was kind of a, uh, hey, let's get it done before we head off to a truck show. Once you're done doing the drill, doing the drilling, cutting into the tank, what we like to do is obviously go in here with a paper towel and try to clean up any of the loose debris in here. It just helps the situation, helps it seal better. Or you can take a knife and just kind of go around and knock any of the leftover plastic off there. You're really just, you're not looking to make it, it's never gonna be spot on it. You just use a drill bit. So it's never gonna be like perfectly like smooth in here. I guess you could say. So don't think that that's gonna happen. All I'm doing to try to, is try to clean it up without losing the roundness of the circle. So that way I don't get any plastic in the fuel system is my goal. I like to try to just keep it clean so when I put it back together, there's no dirt going in the fuel system. Yes, it's got a fast. The fast is gonna catch any of that. On this truck, we've already got it all plumbed for the return to go to the factory return. So I'm not gonna be reusing the return line in this equation because there's no need to. In this sump, the small hole is the return, the big is the suction or the supply to the supply to the pump. So you'll just take your crescent wrench, tighten this up right here, and then we're going to take one of our other fittings and put it in the other one. Now these are a barb fitting they don't, they're not a triple barb fitting like I prefer. They do work just fine. I still run a clamp on them just to be safe. So I do recommend a hose clamp. You can pick one up at your local auto zone or something like that for a few bucks. Let's see here. This guy right here 
goes up like that. And then you kind of scoot it over here to the middle. And then what you'll want to do is you'll want to put this in place where you can angle this guy the correct way. It'll be a little fun to get that lined up. But once you get it lined up, pretty easy to do. Since the pump's right over there, I'm gonna do this, which if you have the fast and the OEM location, this generally works to go straight sideways. Sometimes it can be a butt head to get this thing to line up. I didn't get that squared up perfectly. Am I still facing that way? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, after you get it snugged up right here, I like to take some brake clean and just rinse all the diesel off. Just uh, help make sure it seals up. Now putting the fuel back in is always fun as well. Um, we have this really cool design that we came up with. We invented it yesterday and then sent it to China to be duplicated. <laughs> I'm just playing. <laughs> this pump right here, you go over to Harbor Freight. I'm not gonna lie, this little pump, I've used it to, to put five gallons of transmission fluid into an F-150 and offload fluids out of buckets. I mean, I'm not disappointed with it for what it is for 20 bucks and you put some decent batteries in it and it actually works really well. So this is what we'll use to pump all the fuel back into the truck when we get there. Next, we're gonna hook up the hose. Okay, this is gonna make a mess. Hey, grab me something to cut the hose a little faster with and I can plug it real quick. Never mind, it didn't leak at all when I did it up there. So we're good to go. Now, this can be a major pain going on right here, okay? Sometimes some heat on the hose does the trick or just getting it pushed on there. Okay, once that's installed, then what I'll do is I'll find that ridge and I'll put the clamp right on that ridge. Okay, these are the Napa 1210s. So we go like that. Alrighty. And then now we can take it and if you look, we can measure it right over here to our fast. We'll probably take and zip tie it. I'm gonna probably give it a little extra and I'm gonna zip tie it right there to that hanger for the e-brake cable and then zip tie it to the factory bracket or the bracket for the fast. And this one will be ready to go. Alrighty. Normally you don't need to use clamps on all this stuff, but like I was saying, this guy does a lot of off-roading, so to be safe for him, we're gonna make sure that we do, do justice for him and clamp all the spots that, where there could be a chance of a possible leak just to be safe. And then zip tie the line up really well. We don't want this line having any chance of breaking or falling or anything like that. Obviously losing all your fuel is never a good thing. There's that. Now we're gonna go ahead and put the truck down and fill up some fuels. Pretty straightforward, it's just a sump install. This is after we've already installed a fast. And uh, just wanna pay attention to where you put it in the tank. You wanna try to find a flat spot and as close to the back as you feel comfortable with. I've just never been a fan of back here. Any chance of this thing, of your drive shaft coming apart, one last problem to have, a, you know, one last thing to have a problem with. If it comes apart back there and this is up here, there's a lot less chance it's gonna somehow take out the sump and cause problems. Now, some of these fuel tanks do come with a skid plate underneath them. In that situation, what we do is we take the skid plate down, we measure and we cut out, cut out around this on the fuel, on the skid plate and put the skid plate back in. Skid plate's a good thing to have on this, especially when you off-road a lot. So uh, that's generally the FX4 trucks, I think. 
but this is specifically for a Ford Power Stroke. You can use the same kind of rule of thumb, if you will, on the Duramaxes and your, this is for a 6.0 Power Stroke, your Duramaxes, your Cummins, anything else you're putting a sump in, just kind of, you can always look up top and see where your pickup tube is at and kind of make an educated guess from there on where the, the angle of the pickup tube is going. So you want to try not to hit the pickup tube when you're drilling through it. That is very important. Some guys will take the tank all the way down, pull the pickup tube, and then drill their hole. And there's nothing wrong with that. We know where to put them on these trucks, so we're able to do it this way. So we're gonna fill up the fuel and then that'll be it for the video. All right, guys, now we're going to lower the truck down and put some diesel fuel back in her. And whoever watches it all the way through and calls me and says, hey, I watched you put diesel, the entire 30 gallons with the pump in, you get a free shirt. <laughs> the first 10 that call and say that. I'll have like 7,000 people. The handy dandy all the way from China, Harbor Freight. Oh. Mm -hmm. well, I'm gonna put some tools away while we're waiting here. Just so you guys know, the uh, hole saw is generally a one use only. And if you don't have a Milwaukee, it will not survive one time with fuel all over it. This is the third one in the last week, I think. Probably the 30th sump that this drill has put in. Fuel right through that, that motor and it has no problem. So Milwaukee, I expect a sponsorship at some point. Well, we made it through three buckets so far. We're on the third one. That's good. Mm -hmm. That's good. What? Nothing leaking? Yep, nope, no leaks. That's good. Yep, forgot to check. Blur <laughs> <laughs> this part out. Ooh, liquid aloha. Oh. That's how you do a sump install. It's pretty straightforward, simple. I know it can be daunting if you've never done it. Uh, we appreciate you using our channel to learn how to do it and for guidance. We greatly appreciate that. Give us a call with any questions, 1-800-577-2698. Be sure to click that like, subscribe, follow, notifications button, all of that stuff on the YouTube. So every time we drop a new video, you get to know about it. Uh, if you watch the entire 17 minutes or whatever of us putting fuel in, the first 10 people to call, they got a free t-shirt. So make sure you call in. That thing literally never fails to do it right in the middle of talking. Uh, be sure to check out our Instagram, our TikTok, our Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook. Go follow, subscribe to all of those as well. We like to drop content on every different channel every day. So thanks again for all the support. We greatly appreciate it.